Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is New Kingdom Gardeners by New Kingdom Gaming. This is a two to four player game that takes roughly about a half an hour to play and is for ages 10 and up. And in the game New Kingdom Gardeners, the master gardener is going to be going from his kingdom out into the fields to find the best possible gardener. You and your fellow gardeners are going to go out of your way to try and create the best garden possible by hiring workers, removing the weeds, and planting the seeds to create the best crops. At the end of the day, whoever has the most fruits and has earned the most points will be the winner of the game and be crowned the new head gardener of the kingdom. Do you have what it takes? We'll find out as I show you the setup, I show you how to play, and of course my review. To begin the game, first you'll set up the main player boards. I have a two player setup here, but it's the same for a three and a four player setup. In the game, you'll get your player board and place it in front of you. Then you're going to be getting one of your cards here. This is your turn order. It's going to explain how you're going to be playing the game. Each player is going to get a random gardener. For your first game, just take one of them. But in subsequent games, you're going to be able to take two and choose one of them and place it in your gardener space on your board. Each player is going to start the game with three yellow fruits, which count as one victory point at the end of the game, and they simplify one fruit. These ones here are purple, and they simplify five fruit. You're also going to be getting two dove tokens. These tokens are basically like your workers in the game, and you'll be utilizing them for actions as you go. The player who most recently planted a garden will be the first player. You can give them this token, set it to their left, and for the rest of the game, they will be the first player. The next thing you're going to be doing is taking the main game deck. In this deck here, you're going to be removing all the miracles, and you're going to be removing the main card of the game, which is called the Master Gardener. The Harvest is here, and you'll set those aside. Shuffle these cards up, and then you're going to be taking out a certain number of cards based on the number of players. In a two-player game, you'll take out 30 cards. Then, go ahead and take the last bottom cards of the deck, or I should say take the whole deck, shuffle in all of the miracles, then take the last 10 cards of the deck, shuffle them up, and then put the Master Gardener in, shuffle that into those 10, and place them on the bottom of the deck. And then you should get a sort, sort, of, sort of deck that's roughly half of the size of the deck in a two-player game. If you're playing a three- or four-player game, you'll reduce less cards, thusly the game length will be increased. Then each player is going to take five cards from the top of the deck. This will be their hand. And you'll choose all of the cards in your hand that you have to play immediately. Any card that is a thorn must be placed on your board to the right of your gardener. And if you have any miracles, you'll be also placing those down. They specify on the cards, so you'll know exactly when you have to place them down. And of course, it's always going to go from the right of the gardener and push cards over to the right hand side to the very edge of your board. If you do not have at least three cards in your hand or you have too many thorns, You'll discard those and draw back until you do, so you're always going to be left with a three-card hand at the end of the very beginning of the game. The player who has the most thorns in their field will be that first player, and the game will be ready to go. Go ahead and set aside the deck and prepare to play New Kingdom Gardeners. Playing New Kingdom Gardeners is relatively simple. The first thing that you're going to be doing on your turn is placing down doves. Generally, you're starting with two doves each, and these are basically like your workers in the game. You'll be utilizing these doves, placing them on your workers and your gardener to activate their abilities. There are four main abilities in the game, and each of your specific gardeners is going to have a unique special ability. If your card has a dove symbol, that means you can place a dove on the card. If there are multiple dove symbols, you may place one dove on each, provided that you have the doves. When I place my basic actions on my main gardener, there are four specific actions that each gardener has. The first one is you can pray. Praying allows you to draw two cards from the deck here, and then you have to place any thorns or miracles directly, immediately, into your garden, thusly pushing any cards that are on the right-hand side over, uh, on the left-hand side, over to the right-hand side. And if you ever push cards from the farthest right-hand point, off of the board, that's going to trigger and allow all players to push cards on their boards. So in this instance, if I had another miracle, I place this down, it would push all of these pieces over and these thorns would fall off my board. And these thorns would go to my right, to the player on my right, uh, on the right of their gardener. So in this case, it would push over to this player over here and place, be placed there. And this will trigger in a two, three, and a four player game but it will not trigger for more than one round. So if you, as the player who pushed cards off, ever receives a card, that card will be discarded and it will end. 
The next action you can take is planting. To plant, you'll simply place your dove down and you'll choose a seed from your hand and place it down onto your seeds and thorns area. And the same thing will happen. You're gonna be triggering a little combo that will allow the cards that you push off to go to the player to your right and that player to their right and so on and so forth. If it goes back to you, like I said, it will get discarded. The next action you can take is prune. Sometimes you're going to have weeds in your garden. When you have weeds in your garden, you will be able to utilize cards in your hand uh, or fruit in your field, and you can discard these guys here uh, to equal up to two. And when you do, you'll prune specific weeds. If you prune one on your side of the field, it is going to go away. And if you prune one on your opponent's side, because you can also do that, you're actually gonna set this card aside for the end game and you will score three points. So pruning your neighbor's cards is not actually a bad idea. The next thing you can do is a point, which is the main action in the game actually. This will allow you to place down workers on your field. You can place them in the top row, uh, which is going to have four different spaces, and there are a multitude of different types of workers, which are also going to have specific abilities on them, which you can use doves to place on them. These workers can also be combined. So if you have a monk, and then you draw a monk later, you can appoint another monk, but it will go on the same monk that you have placed previously. This is like creating a party. When you get two monks, you're gonna get a benefit, and then three, and then four. The benefits are usually going to be fruit, which is considered victory points, as well as utilized for specifically spending or pruning. Or at a certain point, when you get three or more, you are able to gain a new dove, which are basically additional workers that you can utilize on your workers and your gardener, provided there's space. You can also choose to place your workers on your opponent's side of the field. And if you create a party there, you'll gain the benefits. And the benefits for placing on your opponent's side of the field are greater than your own. Another cool thing too is when you have parties and you have multiple doves, if each of your workers, let's say your monk has an ability and you have three monks, you can use all three of your doves and place them on all three of your monks because each monk has a space for a dove. Provided that there are only four workers on your field, if you ever wanna put a new one out, and it's a different type than one of the workers you already have, you'll have to discard a worker party, which could be one or more, and you can put that new monk out. Then there are special abilities as well when it comes to placing down your doves. One could be that you may use the ability of any worker in any garden when placing it down on this ability, or any of the different multitude of abilities from the different workers you have. Like the monk, you can take a prey or a prune action, and if you're pruning, you still have to pay the cost. Or maybe you have the manager, which will allow you to take a plant or an appoint action, which is either A, putting down a seed or another worker. Or maybe you've got the grower here, which will allow you to place two yellow fruit on a seed in your garden. And there are reasons to do that as well. These guys here can then be removed from your field if you have the right combination of workers and will allow you to score more points. Regardless though, after you have placed your doves and interacted with any of the abilities that you might be able to act with, you're going to be done. And when you're done, you'll take all of your doves off of your board and place them back into your pool. And you will draw another card from the deck here. Always remember to trigger any cards that you have to when drawing from the deck, such as Thorns and Miracles. Then the next player will get a chance to go. And the game will continue like that. Players will place their doves, interact with their abilities, whether it be to place out workers, to prune weeds, to place new seeds down, um, or to be able to pray and draw cards from the deck up until the point where the deck reaches the bottom and somebody draws the Master Gardener. When that happens, that will trigger the last round of play equal to the, to the first player, and then you're going to count up your points. Any weeds in your garden are worth three negative points. Any of your seeds uh, slash types of uh, mercy, et cetera, et cetera, the different types of miracles will score you points. Each of your workers are worth a certain amount of victory points, and any fruits that you have in your supply are worth points. Whoever has the most is going to be considered the master gardener and will win the game. Yep, yeah, it's that simple. So let's delve a little deeper into the game and then I'll talk about what I think about it and all that good stuff. And the first thing I wanna say about this game is it's, it's rather straightforward and pretty simple to play. When you begin the game, you might have quite a few thorns in your field or you might have no thorns in your field and it might not feel super great at the very beginning of the game when you have a ton of nasty stuff on your field and your opponents have a bunch of great stuff. 
that does not matter. You need to be okay with the fact that at the beginning of the game, you may be in a good spot or in a bad spot, because as the game progresses, things will change. And it all has to do with that, that creeping rule where you're putting the different seeds slash plants on your field, pushing off stuff, putting it on your neighbor's locations, and then possibly, of course, getting cards and putting them on yours. Being able to prune nasty things on your opponent's side of the field is good, and choosing to do so when maybe your opponent has a thorn that's probably likely coming to you next time, getting rid of that, scoring victory points for keeping it, and not having to worry about it hitting you when the creep happens from another player. Another thing to note, too, is most worker placement games have this kind of rule, and I know most of you know the rule. The rule is the more workers you have, the more likely you're going to succeed. That is not necessarily true in this case. Sometimes you might have quite a few doves and not a lot of worker abilities that you want to use or can use. If you have a bunch of workers that you plant and you have no plants or seeds in your hand, it's not really that useful. And in fact, taking a dove might be a disappointment to you as opposed to taking those four victory points when you lose by two at the end of the game. So being aware of what types of resources you need and when and how you utilize them is important. Speaking about utilizing resources, you'll have a variety of ways to be able to get rid of certain cards by pruning them, using certain cards as resources, or using the ones in your stash. Just remember though that at the end of the, ga at the, end of the game, these cards in your hand are going to go away. All your doves will not matter, anything else that will not matter like your, your gardener. All that matters is how many workers you have and how much victory points they're worth how many of these fruits you have and how much they're worth, and then whatever is left in your garden here. Trying to get rid of all the weeds is important, and at the end of the game, there comes this crunch time. You do not know when the game will end, but you might know that it's likely going to end at a certain point based on the turn structure. When playing a two-player game, it might end abruptly, and a four-player game, you might have a little bit more of an idea because you'll know that, oh, there's only 10 cards left, and I am now the player who's in play right now. There's 10, so that means that the game could end on the next turn, the next one, and the next one. Is it likely going to get back to me? I don't know. So I'll have to make that choice to kind of play as though it will be my last turn to set myself up for the best possible success that I can. Utilizing these cards, utilizing the workers and their abilities, and creating parties is very important. In fact, one of the most important things is creating parties. Having duplicates of a specific type of one of your workers is important. Being able to stack them on top of each other is going to be very valuable. So for instance, I'll just go ahead and select one of these guys and give you an idea. So we have the trader and the assistant, and here's a fisher, and here's a monk, right? Uh, and this is my basic workers. I can use all of these guys. They all have one dove space, and I can go ahead and place a dove on each of these guys only once. Uh, but throughout the game, I might get another monk, and I can place that monk on there, and now I've gained uh, victory points. And I place another monk on there. Now I can take a dove, or I can go ahead and take more victory points. And so you may or may not want to actually remove a lot of workers just because you know that you can start growing your parties and scoring points. But also note, other players can grow your parties as well, which kind of helps you, but not really. It's more, more so going to help them, because uh, how many monks are you really going to need? How many times are you going to really want to plant? It's all based on the cards in your hand, what you've gathered throughout the game, and usually people who play cards on you aren't typically out there to help you, but more so out to help themselves. But utilizing the different strengths in the game is important. Utilizing your hand to the best as, your, as you possibly can is important, and of course just knowing that these cards that pop out that instantly fall in the field aren't all that relevant up until they are, and that triggers later. So don't be too up about yourself. If you're doing well mid-game or early game, that's not going to be relevant. What's going to happen is the cards that I have that are all nasty are going to go over to your side of the field, and you're going to give me all your goodies. And so you have to kind of build around that idea of this game. And because of that, this is a really cool, unique game. It has a little feel of kind of a Euro slash Tableau management game, it has this unique little creeping rule that allows you to push resources you don't want away and gain ones that you do, or in case you don't want resources, you can push them off, and then resources, if they come back to you, especially in a two-player game, will get rid of, and you won't have to deal with them, so there's a lot of benefits to how you play based on the player count as well. There's a few notes, I suppose, in this game. Uh, some of these guys look a little bit like seagulls, that's because they are, but in the main game, they will be switched. All of these guys will be doves. You're going to have a different type of first player token. This is a prototype, and things will change. So I'm just going to talk about what I think uh, are important about the game. A, you have to be okay with a little bit of random chance. Stuff in the deck is going to pop out, which you may or may not like, and that's just going to be how it goes. You might get unlucky on the last round of play, and things might go 
drastically not in your favor, which may cost you the game. And sometimes not even at a fault of your own because you just don't know what's gonna pop up between the plays. Another thing too, you have to note that you have to be able to use resources selectively and successfully throughout the game as best as you possibly can. That will gain you the most garnered victory points slash fruit and thusly have the most opportunity to win. Each of the gardeners has a unique little ability, which is also cool, and they, they help you provide you with unique abilities that can be beneficial to you. Now, there's not a lot of, uh, I would say, uh, action building. There's not, there's not a lot of mechanics that you can kind of control an engine in this game, but there are light ones. The one I really like is placing down the fruits from my supply onto these guys and being able to remove them with the Reaper and score points later. There's kind of this little twist and turn to that, but for the most part, these all just grant you unique different abilities or abilities that maybe are kind of similar to each other or to your main guy, thus allowing you to play more doves and kind of interact the, with the turns that you have. And of course, having more doves might be of more benefit in a larger player game as opposed to their smaller player game. It really just depends on what you've got going. As far as the artwork, all of the artwork on all of the cards is excellent. And the board is really nice too. It's very subtle, very relaxed, and it has a huge amount of detail in regards to what is on your board, not mainly the game board. While the game board still looks beautiful, and even when there are no spaces on the board, it feels like it works. I understand what my field is supposed to look like. I have my gardener who's planting all this stuff and pushing and pruning and all that. And then all my workers are up here kind of relegating what, I need to, what needs to be done down below at the bottom of the game board. So artwork is great. Uh, the uh, visual, visualization, visualization of the game is nice as well. People walking by will see this game and want to play as well, specifically because of the very unique mechanic of the creep, which I think is probably the most unique and most interesting aspect to this game. This is going to be a very uh, seemingly familiar game for most of you modern gamers uh, because you're gonna understand how worker placement works and tableau management works and all that's kind of all in there, but it adds a nice little twist with this kind of unique rule and the ability to not really Really know how the game's going up until you started to kind of push through that mid-game point and you now see a, a feel of what you're trying to do and how you're trying to create your garden. Uh, the quality of the game. So like I said, this is a prototype. There are going to be pieces that are going to be changed. I would actually kind of like to see the yellow and the cubes here, these guys here, to be kind of squishy fruit like Everdell. All of the different little doves are cute. I would actually kind of like to see them stand up in some way as opposed to just kind of laying there on the, on, on the field, maybe a little stand. Uh, you know, maybe hopefully stretch goals, that kind of a thing, but it all really works. Uh, the quality of the boards is nice for what's here, but I imagine a lot of this stuff will be kind of improved as uh, the Kickstarter goes on and you start to see additional upgrades and whatnot based on how the funding goal goes. But as it stands, as the game is here right now, it's very playable, it works really well, and as long as you're okay with a little bit of random chance, things popping up from the deck here and there, and the fact that the game can spontaneously end, even though you kind of know when it's going to happen, then you're going to be okay with this game. Overall, it's a lot of fun, it's vibrant, it's beautiful, and a game that pretty much anybody can play. So, New Kingdom Gardeners, it's a good game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game New Kingdom Gardeners by New Kingdom Gaming. If you're interested in picking it up, there's a link down below in the description. This game will be on Kickstarter. I'll have a link for the pre uh, pick up page so you can get notification when it pops up. Or if you're watching this during the campaign, hopefully I've given you some information as to whether or not you should pick this game up for yourself and of course your gaming group. You can go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog post, giveaways, Kickstarter, listen more. Brian does a lot of uh, articles and reviews up there. We have our Instagram, where there's a ton of beautiful imagery of all kinds of games that you've seen us review on this platform and some not because they're given directly to our writers. Uh, we have a whatnot stream at 6.30 p.m. PST on Wednesdays and on Sundays where we have a stream on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube at 6.30 p.m. PST where you can watch us play games just like this one that you see here. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to being the head gardener while you're stuck in the fields next time. <laughs>